42. And the Bible says that there were certain other malefactors that were crucified with Jesus, right? And one of them began kind of heckling Jesus. And verse 41, the one said, we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man have done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, verse 42, can y'all read that together? Lord, what? Remember when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, what? Verily I say unto you that uh -huh. today, right now, today you be with me in paradise. From our scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul talked about a man in the body or out of the body, one that was caught up into heaven. A little bit later on, he tells us that this person was caught up into paradise. Paradise. Well, if you've been following our, our, our teaching, uh, we've been uh, just trying to uh, help you understand that we don't have to die to experience heaven. Let me say that again. You don't have to die to experience heaven. Amen. Now, all of us won't have to go that way. I, I told you I am halfway there. I'm going to be celebrating my 120th. All right. I know some of you won't be around that long to see how good I'm going to look. So that's why I just want you to look at me now because I'm going to be looking just as good as I'm looking right now. All right. So, so but, 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 but the truth of the matter is not all of us have to go through the grave. I don't believe that we have to be taken out with an illness or a sickness. I, I believe that we can just give up the ghost. But that's if you want to. There's some of us that are going to be alive and remaining. All right. Some of us are coming in and out of that realm right now. You don't you don't have to wait till you till you expire to see the gates or you don't have to wait uh, till you expire to see Jesus. You, 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 you don't have to you don't have to fall out and somebody hits you with a car or you leave your body. You don't have to do any of those things. All you have to do is believe. Tell your neighbor all you have to do is believe. Believe, believe, believe. So so Jesus says to the thief that today. Right? You're going to be with me in paradise. Now, paradise had some, some other names. Uh, uh, in some texts, it was called Sheol or Hades or the grave, okay? Uh, but specifically in our lesson today, I want to describe this place, paradise, before the resurrection of Jesus Christ as Abraham's bosom. You got me? Abraham's <laughs> bosom. Wait, 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 wait. I want to know the origin of it. I thought the song said pennies from heaven. This certainly looks like a nickel. It's a fivefold. Did Prince do that? My friend. Well, this nickel going to turn into dollars. I'm going to give it back to you so you can so see it again. Here we go. Oh, you're all right. No dollars. We got dollars. In Luke chapter 16, and I just want you, can I just kind of take my time? I'm more concerned with you following me than I am with us concluding today, all right? All right. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 19, he says, there was a, you, you ready, your mic? There was, ready, there was a right? certain man which was clothed right in. It's important. A certain rich man. There was a certain rich man okay. which was clothed in purple and fine linen right. and fared Sumptuous. sumptuously every day. That's right. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus uh -huh. which was laid at his gate full of sores uh -huh. and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Uh -huh. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried. Okay, hold it right there. All right, uh, those of you got red letter edition Bibles, is this who's talking? Yeah. All right, so Jesus is telling a story about a certain rich man and a certain beggar, right? Notice that the rich man's name is not mentioned. I like that. Don't, don't you like that? That Jesus said, I, I'm, I'm going to address the beggar by name. So Jesus is actually telling us where the real emphasis should be on the story. And I'm like you. I want some stuff. But this beggar's got some substance. Oh, yeah. Keep reading. And the, the Bible says here that it, the beggar died yep. and he was carried by angels. Yes. Where? 
in the Abraham's Abraham bosom. bosom. Y'all believe that? Do you believe that, that there are supernatural beings that escort us from this dimension to the next? The Bible calls them angels. In the Old Testament, they were called sons of God. They were not necessarily winged creatures as much as they were the host. All right? So we can have, you hear people say that, hey, when, when my cousin or when my mother or when this individual was transpiring, I felt some other presence in the room. Right? And I saw some other my ancestors. I saw some of my other family members that have come to escort this person in the room. Anybody heard that? Y'all believe that? Okay, let's keep reading. All right, keep going. And he cried and said, oh no, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. Okay, let's go back to 22. Re read and 22 it came to pass right. that the beggar died right. and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Okay, so the, the beggar ended up where? In Abraham's bosom. But the rich man died and they just what? He was buried and in hell he lifted up his eyes. They said that he died and they just buried him. Right. Mm -hmm. You think he had a nice funeral? The rich man. You, you think it was popping? You think it was jumping, right? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all think it was it was it was lavish, huh? Think they spent a little change for him, all right? Spent a whole lot of change for him to be in hell, right? The next verse, twenty-three. Come on, it's there. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off. And Lazarus in his bosom. Okay, so the be the rich man was consciously aware that he was where? Not the rich man. That's right. So the rich man was consciously aware of where he was. See, there's a lot of people that have you to believe that once you leave here, that you lose all consciousness of everything. Well, the Bible doesn't teach that. That's what people would have us to believe, that when you leave here, you cease to exist. Well, you were already existing before you got here. So if you left here, why would you cease? All right, somebody talk to me. S say it again. I said you were here before you got here. So if you already existed before you got here, why would you stop existing just because you leave here? Right? Well, what type of existence... Was it? Well, he was consciously aware of what's going on. People say, well, dead folk have no consciousness. They're not aware. Well, what verse is that? When, when God spoke to the prophet, I, prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, he said, before I formed you in the belly, I, I knew you. We had a conscious existence with God before we got here. Yeah, y'all don't. Y'all, y'all. Y'all not feeling it. The, Jesus, Jesus is talking, right? He said that the rich man knew that he was in hell, and the rich man also knew that that beggar was in a different place than he was, called Abraham's bosom. Right? Okay, let's keep reading. And, and, but Ab oh, and okay. he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the, finger, dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Uh, hell doesn't sound like a cool place, does it? It's uh, kind of hot. And he's having a conversation with Abraham, saying to Abraham, do what? That, that the rich man may come and dip his finger in the water and come cool his tongue. Abraham, the rich man says to Abraham, send the beggar, Lazarus, that he, that he may dip the tip of his finger in some water and cool my tongue. Now, the rich man had nothing to do with the beggar all this time till he showed up in hell. Isn't it amazing who we reach out to when we get in hell? <laughs> Ooh, preacher, where are you going with this? All right, now there was some conversation, right? Get yep. Going. But Abraham said, right. Son, mm -hmm. remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things. And, Laz and likewise, Lazarus, evil things. Mm -hmm. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, uh -huh. between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, uh -huh. so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Okay, slow down. Here we so, so, so Abraham and the rich men are having this conversation. 
right? And he says there is this gulf between us, even though I can see you, you can see me, and we're having this conversation with one another, you can't come over here and we cannot go over there because there's something called a gulf that's fixed between us. Right? Mm -hmm. I like that. So, so when you examine uh, the text, the words, the nuance on the word, it's as if the Lord, it wasn't as if he was saying there is this impassable interval that is so steadfast and established that in this dispensation, and they were in a dispensation because a little bit later on they start talking about Moses and the prophets. You can't come here and we can't go there. And then Jesus finally tells them, oh, well, you're not going to believe it if somebody came from here anyway. Right? Hmm. So, so let's finish the chapter. Let's, let's talk about this impassable, steadfast, set interval between the two. You ready? If you would, pick up at verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place for, of torment. Okay, so, so what was he requesting? The rich man said, look, send Lazarus up to my family that's still in the earth, ran, and tell them not to come down here. Don't you wish you could do something like that? Right? That'd be a good thing. Well, well, let's take it out of the deaf experience. Don't you really think that we should be telling people about the good heavenly experiences that we're having right now? And when we start sharing and talking to people, some people just don't believe that we're telling the truth. Right? So, finish the story. All right? Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Okay. And he said, nay, Father Abraham but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Hmm. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Wow. Wow. It's there, right? All right. So, so it's, it's a long story. We'll just have to kind of pick some of these other pieces up. But specifically, I want to talk about Abraham's bosom. And in, in the dispensation that we are speaking of right now, it was a holding place. It was actually a prison. Yeah. First Peter chapter 3. Y'all kind of intrigued? All right. Abraham's, Abraham's bosom, a holding place. I'm in 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to start reading in verse 18. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit, all right, by which also he, what? Preach unto the spirits in prison. Okay, so through his death experience, Jesus went and he preached to some spirits that were in prison. Y'all got that? So there were some prisoners that Jesus felt as if he had to, upon his death, go and preach to. So what if I'm telling you today that there are individuals in this room that are locked up in a holding place or something has transpired in their life, something has transpired in their journey, something has transparent transpired in their history and they're literally behind bars or incarcerated they don't know that they're bound but God wants to send a word to you and I today to help you understand that you don't have to stay behind that wall there was something going on down in Abraham's bosom that necessitated Jesus going down there to preach to them anybody in the room have you ever heard any of this before some of y'all shaking. I ain't never heard nothing like this before in my life. That's good. We're in church now. <laughs> All right. Turn, if you would, okay, to Ephesians chapter 4. And let me just kind of expound some of these words. The word prison that we just read. He preached to the spirits that were in prison, meaning they were on hold. They were in a cage. They were in a war. They were in the idea of being isolated or kept or preserved or imprisoned. So Jesus went down and had a conversation with some individuals. The Bible says they were spirits that were in a ward. 
in a hole, in a preserve, in an imprisonment. They were being kept for a while. Who could that be? I know the answer. I just want you to think about it. Who could that have been down at Abraham's bosom that the Bible refers to them as they were being guarded or in a hole, in a cage, on a watch. The idea they were being isolated or kept or preserved or imprisoned. Oh, I like all this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hallelujah. You in Ephesians chapter 4? Okay, let's start reading at verse 7. But unto every one of us is uh -huh. given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Uh -huh. Wherefore he saith, when, he, when as he ascended up on who high. Who are we talking about? Jesus. Jesus. Everybody know Jesus is the one that ascended up on high? Yep. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he did what? Led captivity oh, captive. Oh, he led what? Captivity captive. And? Gave gifts unto men. Okay. So we had some spirits that were in prison. And now Ephesians says that when Jesus ascended up on high, there was a group called captivity that he led captive. You ever heard that before? He led captivity captive. He led captivity captive. Well, the word captivity means prisoners of war. Yeah, there were some prisoners of war that Jesus led them out of their captivity to another place. Y'all not follow me yet. All right? Prisoners of war. What, what, what battle could these spirits have been in that necessitated Jesus coming down to preach to them and ultimately leading them out of their cage? <laughs> oh, boy. I wish I had some folk in here that said, look, we don't know what you're talking about, but it's a juicy story. <laughs> All right. Well, it's obvious. Well, let me keep reading. Verse 9. I'm still in Ephesians chapter 4. Now that what? Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended right. first into the lower parts of the earth? Okay. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. Okay, so where is hell? Beneath what? Where is it? Beneath the earth? The lower part of the earth. All right, so there we go. So when, y'all still in the room? So when Jesus is telling, telling the story about the rich man, right? And the beggar, if the rich man was in hell in the lower parts of the earth, then Abraham's bosom was where? He said there was a gulf between them. So why you immediately say it was up? If Jesus led captivity captive, said he descended first into the lower parts. So Abraham's bosom was in the lower parts along with hell. Y'all thinking about that or y'all like, I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say nothing. Just going to stone face you today. Just going to look at you just like that. Okay, so think about it. We just read in Ephesians chapter 4. When he ascended on high, he led captivity ta captive. But also said before he ascended, he descended into the lower parts of the earth. Well, if we say hell was down, then Abraham's bosom must just have been across from it, but it was down. So, so before the resurrection of Jesus Christ, hell, the grave shield, was all down. All right? So Jesus had to descend down first to preach to some prisoners of war. Uh -huh. Well, what kind of war or what kind of battle were these spirits in that held them in this cage? You thinking about it? Okay, hold on. Let, let's, let's, let's make sure y'all on board. Hell and Abraham's bosom were both in the lower parts of the earth. And what separated the two? A gulf that was in 
impassable. You, one could not cross over, but they were aware who was over there. Yeah. Right? They were having conversations. Yeah. Right? Now, Abraham's bosom, you know, when we think of Abraham's bosom, you start thinking of what? His, his stomach. Well, it doesn't mean Abraham's stomach. Abraham's bosom was an intimate personal name given to this group of individuals because Abraham would be the father of us all. So it was a way of acknowledging that this was a special place for people of faith. Abraham's bosom were those people that died in faith. Y'all got me? And those individuals that died in faith before the resurrection of Jesus Christ were kept in a hold called Abraham's bosom. Now, it wasn't a prison where you only got bread and water. Spirits don't need to eat. But something was in place that they could not move out of that place until something happened with the entrance. You got me? Okay. You ready? Now, let's go get real juicy now. Uh huh. So we just connected those individuals to Abraham, right? He's the father of faith. So Hebrews chapter 11 tells us <laughs> You there? Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, Now what? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the evidence of things not seen. For by it? For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith, we understand that uh -huh. the worlds were framed by the word of God uh -huh. so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Uh -huh. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Okay, so what happened to Abel? He just died? He was murdered. All right, but before his murder, he offered the sacrifice by, by faith. So... Where would he be? In Abraham's bosom. Who's his parents? Where would they be? In Abraham's bosom. So everybody in Abraham's bosom goes all the way back to Adam and Eve to Christ. So that you think it's a big place, a little place? <laughs> huh? Y'all not talking back to me yet. All right, so if all these people died in faith, Abraham, well, let me just, y'all looking to be like, where did you get that from? Okay, all right, we have 11, 4, we got Abel, 5, we got Enoch, 7, we got Noah, 8, we got Abraham, 11, we got Sarah, right? Then down 20, we got Isaac, 21, Jacob, we got Joseph, we got Moses, all right, let's keep going. Uh, we got Rahab in 31. Jephthah, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, all the prophets. We got those who subdued kingdoms, obtained promises, stopped the mountain line. We keep going. Others that had trial, cruels of mocking, scourgings. Some that were stoned, some that were sawn, those that were tempted, those were slain. It's a whole bunch of folk, right? Those that hid out in caves, wandered in the mountains and wilderness. 39, all these having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. So that's a whole long lineage history of mankind that would be down here in Abraham's bosom. They all died in what? Faith. They never received the promise. Abraham was still looking for a city or a placement or the place that Jesus said he was preparing for us. They never saw it. They died believing in it, embraced it, confessed it, but never got there. So they're down in this whole place called Abraham's bosom. And Jesus said, I just need to let them know that what they died in faith for is now manifested. Can you imagine what that sermon felt like down there in hell? Y'all not feeling me. Can you imagine what that must have been like for Jesus to show up down there in Abraham's bosom and have... Three day revival. You, you, you can't feel me. You can't see it. You can't imagine it. Do you think they were a little excited? Do, 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 do you think they had any clue what was going to happen on the third day? 
Do you think they were being encouraged? Do you think their, their faith was being built? Do you, do you, do you think their, their imagination was just, oh, what's going to happen? He's preaching, he's pre and he keeps preaching, and on and on and on. And on the third day, this is what Romans 6 says, the glory of the Father just showed up down there in hell. Anybody in the room? Can you, can you imagine Lucifer, the grave, and hell all celebrating what they thought was the end and all of a sudden glory starts shaking. I mean it just wasn't glory. The Bible said mountains and rocks and stuff started moving. Y'all not fear. Wait, wait, wait. Y'all don't believe that. Do, do, you, do you believe it was a little disturbance? Huh? I mean, imagine you're at your lowest point and all of a sudden somebody starts sharing with you the good news and something that you said, you know what? I, I feel like a breakout. <laughs> Connor, have you ever been so down and God sent the right one with the right word and you start telling yourself, I'm coming up out of here. <laughs> this thing can no longer hold me. This thing can no longer keep me. This thing can no longer bind me. And you started shaking everything around you. Yes or no? Hmm. So Romans 6 and 4 said Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. The rest of Hebrews 12, 40 said, God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. So here they are sitting down at Abraham's bosom and all of a sudden the promised one shows down in hell. Talking to spirits. Tell your neighbor, I talk to spirits. <laughs> See, I know. I ain't going to use that. I have folk that upset them with me yet today because I have conversation with spirits. Well, it's about 75 spirits in the room. I'm talking to y'all right now. <laughs> right? But why people want to make it so mysterious? Because Jesus went down into the very place that was holding them and delivered them. And I'm telling you, that is so powerful. Jesus wants us to deliver the message where the people are in the strong. It, it takes a certain type of individual to say, you know what, I can meet you in your jail cell. I can meet you in the thing that's holding you down, oppressing you, that thing that is in, I can meet you right there. Because see, the real issue is not really getting you out, it's opening you up to receive. Are you in the room? Whoa, whoa, whoa. How do you know that? Do you remember when they threw Paul and Silas in prison? The Bible says that about midnight, the Bible says that they had beat him. They had beat him so bad, and then they threw him in the inner prison and then locked their feet in stocks. But about midnight, somebody came to themselves. The Bible said somebody started praying, somebody else started singing. That's what I'm talking about. You need somebody to remind you that this thing cannot hold you. It's only a temporary situation. It cannot hold you. It cannot keep you down. So about midnight, they started singing. And guess what? When you are incarcerated and your father in heaven hears, my son, my daughter still worships me in the place of their incarceration, God responded with an earthquake and started shaking everybody's prison. And the Bible said all the prison doors came open. But nobody left. Nobody left because God was trying to get into a place. Right? Let's keep reading. Amen. You hear it? Throw me another nickel up here, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. John chapter 20. Y'all with me? I, I, I'm, try I'm trying to get somewhere. John 20. Okay. John 20. Okay? Now, this is after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want to start reading at 11. But Mary, 
but Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. Mm -hmm. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. Right. And seeth two angels in white sitting, mm -hmm. the one at the head and the other at the feet, uh -huh. where the body of Jesus had lain. Uh -huh. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they had laid him. Uh -huh. And when she had thus said, right. she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Uh -huh. Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou had borne had him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, mm -hmm. and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto her, Three words. Touch me not. That's it. Okay. So, Mary does not know that it's Jesus until he calls her name. Yeah. Right? And, and, and we know the relationship. Naturally, you want to reach out and... Yeah. Nobody in the room. Yeah. When you want to... The, the one that died for you, I'm talking about that one. The one that saved you, the one that's been healing you. Don't you want to touch him? And Mary wants to reach out and embrace him. And Jesus said to you, you don't touch me. And he tells her why. Because I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them. Okay, hold. So there's two ascensions. Right? That's two that's recorded. This one, and then the final one at the end of Matthew chapter 28, where Jesus was received up into heaven with the angels on a cloud, right? So why could he not be touched? Because there's some work he's got to do in the Holy of Holies in heaven that he cannot be contaminated or touched until something is offered in heaven. Y'all in the room. Woo! Let me just holler myself. Well, if you go to Hebrews chapter 9, it tells us what happened in the first ascension. So he cannot be touched. He cannot be handled. Because he said, I, I have to ascend to my father. Right? Well, in Hebrews chapter 9, uh, I think let's start at verse 12. Yes? All right. How about 11? But Christ being come, come a high priest of good things to come, okay. but a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, uh -huh. that is to say, not of this building. That's right. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Okay, what kind of redemption? Each, how many times did he have to do it? And where did he have to do it? In heaven. Okay, so the, the whole theme of Hebrews is the word better. What the high priest on earth had to do every year, Jesus did one time forever. I don't know if that does anything for you. So you do not have to depend upon a high priest coming and confessing your sins over the blood of bulls and goats and heifers. Jesus said one time, and he did it forever for everything you and I will ever do as long as mankind exists in the earth ring. That's better. Isn't that better? Tell your neighbor better. That's better. That's better. That's better. Better. Right? Well, how did he specifically do it? Come on, let's keep reading. Verse chapter 10 says, all right, verse 19, having, having therefore, brethren, uh -huh. boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, all right, by a new and living way, wow. which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Okay, so... In hell, we had a gulf. In the kingdom, now we understand that that gulf that was in the story was really a veil separating us from the purpose of God, right? From these other rooms of the tabernacle. Jesus became the separation, right? And then he offered his own blood upon the mercy seat of God and gave us eternal access.
access into the presence of God with boldness. All right. Look up at, go up to verse 12 of the same chapter. It says, But this man, after he hath offered one sacrifice. Wait a how many sacrifices? One sacrifice. How many sacrifices? One sacrifice. How many sacrifices? One sacrifice. Tell your neighbor, I thought you said he ain't never going to forgive me for this. Oh. Huh? God ain't going to ever forgive me for this. You ain't going to ever, you ain't going to ever, 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 ever be extended mercy for this. One sacrifice for sins. Forever. How many sins? Sins forever. Whose sins? All sins. Everybody sins. How long? Forever. Even if you haven't done it yet? Forever. No, he's going to come back and sacrifice again. One. Forever. When that happened, Look at John chapter 14. Anybody still excited? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. You ready? John 14 and 1. John 14 and 1. Uh huh. Let not your heart be troubled. Right. You believe in God, believe also in me. Isn't that what it says? Well, in my father's house are many mansions. I do what? If it were not so, I would have told you. I do what? I go to prepare a place for you. And? And if I go and prepare a place for you. Then I'm going to do what? I will come again and receive you unto myself. All right, hold on. Mary, don't touch me because I need to go prepare this place for you. Now, when I get done setting up this place, I'm going to come back and receive you to myself because I want you to hang out where I'm hanging out. So when Jesus had that first ascension, he solidified, all right, the placement of you and I now dwelling in heavenly places, right? Then he came back and received us. Oh, y'all not following. Now, this is how we know. That the Bible says in Matthew chapter 27, uh-oh. Uh huh. Matthew 27. See, the reason why they couldn't go earlier is because the place had not been sanctified. But now that the place has been sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ, watch this. You in Matthew 27, 51. And behold, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom uh -oh. and the earth did quake uh -huh. and the rocks rent right. and the graves were opened yeah. and many bodies of the saints which were slept arose yeah. and it came clean. out of the graves after his resurrection. When did they come out? After his resurrection. When he got up, guess what? <laughs> Y'all not feeling me yet? The saints, it said some of the saints that slept got up. Now, they didn't get up and disappear. They start walking among the city. Y'all not feeling me yet. It's right there. It's right there. And many of the, it says, and they came out of the graves. And, when, many, and many of the saints, the bodies of the saints, which slept arose. And did what? And came out of the graves when, after, his, after his resurrection. And went where? Into the holy city. And did what? And appeared unto many. Isn't that what the Bible said? the resurrection of Jesus Christ all these people that were incarcerated in prison had liberty now to come out and walk and move around in the earth realm so there is nothing holding them now in paradise now remember now he led captivity captive so what was down in the earth he took it up and set it up in the third heaven where God is. They have free access to come in and out of the earth rim and the heavenly rim as they choose. But they couldn't before. Anybody in the room? I'm talking to somebody. All right. Now Hebrews chapter 12. You said, well, well where did you get that from? They, they, they're, up in, they're up in the third heaven with God. Well, we're going we to come on down the street and turn the corner and come on up in your living room. 
You have Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. But, but ye also but are ye, come unto Mount Zion yeah. and okay. unto the city of the living God, All right. the heavenly Jerusalem, uh -huh. and unto an innumerable company of angels, yes. to the generally assembled and church of the firstborn, uh -huh. which are written in heaven, and, and to God, the judge of all, and, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. <laughs> The who? The, the spirit of just men made perfect. So these spirits that were in prison are now in Mount Zion because they've been made perfect. Y'all there? Y'all come to that same conclusion. So they were down in Abraham's bosom. Now they're in Mount Zion. They're termed the spirits of just men made perfect. Well, what needed to be made perfect? Well, their spirits were down in this place, incarcerated in prison, in a hole, in a keep, separated until Jesus came down and established the way or the access. Right? And now they're in the very presence of God. They are now what we call the host of the Lord, part of the host. You ready? Now, what are they doing? Hebrews chapter 12. Well, see, something happened when they were down in prison. Something went on. There are people that think, you know, so when I die, if I die and go to heaven, I'm going to sit down by the bank of the river. What a time. What a time. What a time. Remember that song? When all... <laughs> God's children get together, Lord, what a time, what a time, what a time, we're going to sit out, now wait a minute, most of us been sitting on this side, now why are we going to sit over there? Y'all don't remember that song? Where do we get that from? What scripture is that? Where, where, where do we get that heaven is some stop existence and all we're doing is just floating around the gates eating fish and drinking wine speeding watermelon seeds well, where, do, where, where do we get this picture that that's what heaven is like as if we stop learning or we stop growing, or we stop maturing. And there's not things that God wants to tell us and say to us and reveal to us even in that glorified state. He said, well, where are you coming up with that? Well, if you look at Revelations chapter 4, come on, just, and then we'll go back to Hebrews. If you look at Revelations chapter 4, John is in the spirit of, uh, he said, he's in the spirit on the Lord's day or the day of the Lord. In chapter 4, he said a door was open and, and then a trumpet telling him to come up hither. John began to see some things. Right? What did he see? He saw the throne room. He saw the sea of glass. He saw these living creatures. He saw these elders sitting upon thrones and the elders are listening to these angels making declarations about the faithfulness of God and there was and is, is to come. And when they hear that, they come off the throne and they cast their crowns and they start. There is so much God is going to be revealing to us in those heavenly places that it's going to make us bow all over again. Right? So, so how long are we going to be doing that? Forever. And ever. And ever. Right? You got that point? So, well, well, well what are you doing? I, I would kind of attribute it. Now, this is from my experience. You're not going to find quote by quote Bible on this. What, what, what are they doing? Well, I believe 
the Bible says, y'all with me? That for the believers, for the faithfulness, the first thing we have to deal with is what's written on the book. Y'all quiet. Revelations. Yeah, come on. Revelations chapter 20, verse 12. And I saw? I saw the dead, small and great. That's right. Stand before God. And the books were opened. What does that say? The what? The books were opened. Come on, congregation, are y'all listening? What was open? The books were open. All right. And then it says there was a? And another book was The open, other book, which? Which is the book of life. All right. So there's a book of life, and then there's some other books, mm -hmm. right? And the dead were, were judged out of those things things which were written in the books all right according to their works so our judgment is not about heaven and hell it's about what's written on the book that we did not accomplish so we we if we left the earth rim we're in the immediate presence of God and God said now there are some things that I recorded that you were supposed to do in the earth rim and I want to see how you have aligned with what's written on the book Now, most of us, if you would use your gift of suspicion, you would know that there are some things on the book you're not even close to fulfilling. So something in us should say, you know what, I really need to align myself with what's written. No. Okay. So for those of us that have crossed over, so one of our first classes is coming face to face with the book. Now, how long do you think the Lord is going to entertain our excuses of why we didn't do it? I'm just, just wondering. Okay. Now, you know everything on the book is connected to us being the glory of God in the earth rim that would draw people back to him. So we've got to deal with all the individuals that did not behold his glory because they were too busy looking at us acting up. How long you think that, how long is that class? Y'all not talking to me yet. How long you think we gonna be in that class? Reliving those situations or looking at those situations that we know that we were not a proper conduit for the glory to fall, to flow through. You say, well, I'm going to, am I going to be convicted? And, well, it's not a conviction. It's, it's realizing that I have come short. And then everything in me wants to say, you know what? Let me see if I can reach back and correct some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, in my experience, my experience, I can almost discern where these individuals are in the process by if they look more earthly versus heavenly. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we have borne the image of the earthly, but when we're changed, when we're really transformed, we start looking like the heavenly. Some of the individuals that have crossed over still look more like they did here than they should up there. Y'all looking at me like, what sci-fi channel are you on right now? Huh? It, it's, 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 it's the coloring. It's the glory, it's the haze, it's the, uh, the transfigured image that doesn't quite look like it's there yet. It looks like it's transitioning. It speaks to me about where they are in the process. Mm -hmm. Are y'all there? I, I got some more juicy stuff. Y'all all right with that? I felt like mm, you better stop that right now because folk going to get upset. Go back to Hebrews chapter 11 just for a few moments. And let me just talk about what I'm trying to describe here. I have seen my parents on several occasions now. And the first time I, would, I, would, I saw my dad, he looked gray. Kind of dark, kind of hazy. And, and my mother would say to me while she was living, she said, uh, somebody was here. And, and I knew who the somebody was. And... He keeps pressing me to, to, to do this, and she kept saying, I don't want to do it. 
And I knew that as long as she was in that place of not wanting to do it, he was held there. Okay? So they kept going on, kept going on, kept going on, kept going on. I said, Mom, you just really need to let this go. I ain't going to never let this go. Well, I don't know if she ever did, but I know the first time I saw her, she looked like she didn't. She looked like she didn't let it go. It, 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 was, it was heavy. She looked dark. Now, recently since I've seen her, they're a lot brighter. They're a lot lighter. All right? And some of the stuff, now this, this, is, this is what's going to get you. Y'all okay? Yeah. I'm not going to disappear on y'all. I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> okay? That, imagine now, I, I want you to make this connection. Imagine all those patriarchs and whatever their issue was, whatever their concern was, whatever uh, they thought they missed, whatever they thought never came together, whatever dream never came into full manifestation, they still died hoping. And imagine in a three-day period of time, Jesus settled all of that. Y'all not feeling me yet. Huh? He, he, he said all of that with a conversation. So imagine they're in prison. They're listening to this message. All right, now that's what y'all follow me. The Bible says, now the Lord is that glory. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there also is. But we all, as in an open face, or beholding in a glass, the image of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Glory shows up in hell. Not only does it raise Jesus up, but it, can, it transforms these prisoners into glory vessels. Don't you think it's something in them that would want to communicate the same type of encouragement to the rest of us that are still in jail? So imagine we're sitting in the room and we're all in some level of incarceration. And God said, I want to send some supernatural help to help you continue running the race. First thing I have to do is just preach to you. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11. All right. Read the last verse of 11. God having provided some better thing for us uh -huh. that they without us should not be made perfect. Okay, keep reading. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. So you know who he's talking about. The witnesses that he's referring to go all the way back to Adam and Eve, Abel, and all those people we just read, including all of those individuals that we know that have died in faith since then. They're all part of this group. Y'all looking at me like, Right? All right. Keep going. Let they us are called a what? A, a great cloud of, of witnesses. Lay aside every. Let us lay aside every weight and, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Uh -huh, and, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Uh -huh. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, okay. who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Okay. Dis despising the shame, uh -huh. and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. All right, hold. So what if they are aware that there's some weights that we're still carrying in our lives, in our history, in our journey? And some of those things that we're carrying, it's going to take a supernatural intervention. Somebody who's bold enough, strong enough to drop down into your hell, Right? And speak to you in your prison and encourage you that you begin to shake that thing off and lay aside some of those weights or sin that's hindering us from running. Don't, yeah. 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 Now watch it. Woo, that's juicy. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 25. Now, now this, 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 this is where the Holy Ghost just blew all my fuses. Just blew them all. You ready? You ready? I, I'm, I'm going to read this because I'm excited about it. 
2531, ready? When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all his holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. How many of y'all in that group? For I was hungry, and you? I was thirsty. I was a stranger. Naked, and you? I was sick. I was in? Ooh. I was in prison. And I needed somebody to come to me. Can you, can you? Thank you, Johnny. Johnny said, I'm going to come to you. Oh, get that little child on me. Okay, no, 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 watch it. He doesn't stop there. All right. Then shall the righteous answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we a stranger took thee on a naked and clothed thee? And when were you sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king answered, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren, you've done it unto me. <laughs> Do you hear what he's saying? There are people maybe sitting right next to you in a prison. Will you go to it? Will you preach the hope? Will you preach the confidence? Will you preach that you're going to come out of this place? That's what Jesus did. He wasn't ashamed to touch the cell. He wasn't ashamed to come where they were. Huh. in prison. I want you to take a few moments here as, as we are we are closing. I, I, I've got more. But I, I think this is a, a good spot right here to just think about what I'm in, what I'm still locked behind, what I'm unable to break out of myself. It's John that declared, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The enemy <laughs> finds himself very secure. Just saying.